What's up, Sunday School? It is me again. I'm Brian, for those of y'all that don't know me. Um, and once again, I am so incredibly tired of speaking to a, to a camera. Um, so, I miss all of you dearly. I really, really wish that I could be doing this in person. But one day, we will get there. COVID will be gone, and we will be back in church, in person, and it'll be glorious. I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm excited to talk to y'all today. Um, I always love um, speaking to y'all and, um, and trying to teach you guys as best I can. Um, but today we're talking about being stuck, and I just really think that that is a great um, topic right now, and I think it's something that we can all kind of um, agree that we all kind of feel stuck at the moment, I think, uh, either stuck um, in our house or stuck in our room or um, maybe we have a job and, and we can't even go there or we can't even go to school or um, can't even go to church or anything. I just think a lot of us are struggling with um, that feeling of being stuck. So I'm really excited for, um, for today and uh, I'm excited to talk to you all today about that. Um, so when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, um, you know, I started thinking about times when I felt stuck and one that, you know, kind of, um, kind of stayed with me. And, um, I, I kept thinking about was when I was trying to figure out if I was going to graduate college or, um, or play my fifth year of football. And obviously I love football. I loved everything about it. I love the coaches, my teammates, um, and when the decision came that, you know, I either stay, um, graduate, graduate college, but keep playing football or, um, just graduate college and move on. Um, it was a very, very tough decision for me. And I, I just felt, I, I really did feel stuck between two things. You know, I could either, um, play one more year of football or I could graduate and go work, um, and, and work here and work at St. Andrew. And, and it was a really, really tough decision for me. Um, ultimately, obviously, I graduated um, and I, I um, didn't play my fifth year of football. And so I came here and started working here at, at, at church. And man, I think it was the best decision ever. I've loved it. Um, and what was so great about that decision um, is because so I um, stopped playing football and then I had one semester until I graduated. And so that semester, I was really able to focus on track and focus on my throwing events. Um, and I really had an incredible time doing that. I really loved the aspect of um, of it not being football, not being necessarily a team sport, but I was able to focus on myself, focus on what I needed to do better um, to, to compete and to um, just be a better all around athlete at, at those throwing events. So. I really do think it was the best decision, um, but man, I spent so many nights praying about what I should do, if I should keep playing football or if I should graduate and move on. Um, and I'm sure a lot of y'all have those um, those same similar stories where you're stuck making a decision or you're stuck um, and really with anything. There's so many different things that can happen. Um, and I. Um, I want you all to think about that right now. Think about a time when you felt stuck, when you were stuck. Um, just, to, just try to get your mind going in, in that direction, so we can, um, yeah, so you can kind of, kind of be here with me in that. Um, but moving on, the Bible talks a lot about people being stuck. For instance, um, Paul spent a lot of time being stuck in prison. Uh, the people of Israel were stuck in the wilderness. Um, but probably one of the worst cases of being stuck, in my opinion, is Jonah being stuck in a whale. Um, that just doesn't sound like any fun to me. Fish don't smell good, um, so I can't imagine what the inside of a whale would smell like. Um, and, uh, but so often we see that in all these stories that, um, that God is, God is with all these people. So when, when Paul was, was stuck in prison, he... Um, he continued to praise God even though um, he was wrongly justified um, and he was stuck and there was nothing he could do. 
and it wasn't really his fault. Um, in Jonah's case, uh, he prayed and repented uh, because ultimately he was stuck um, because he was running from God. Um, but in these cases, good or bad, um, they're stuck, but they turn to God anyway and, and call out to God and pray to God, and, um, and God is with them regardless of what they've done, regardless of if, if you're Jonah running away from God or if you're Paul just being put in prison um, you know these these guys they prayed they prayed and, and God was with them through it all um, so when I was stuck with my decision like I said I prayed every single night um, to try to oh gosh to try to figure out what the best path was for me to go on I prayed that that God would lead me down the right path um, and it wasn't easy like I've said it, it was not an easy decision for me to make um, and it was hard. I was stuck in that decision-making process. Um, but I want to look at a specific story in the Bible um, about a guy named Joseph. Um, and so, quick little backstory. Basically, Joseph, um, he was a younger brother. Um, and, you know, like all younger brothers, um, I'm, I'm a younger brother also, but we always fight and argue and... Um, and you know bicker with each other with our older siblings and that's that's kind of the case here um, but just to kind of add on to that um, Joseph was um, the favorite son the favorite child and everybody knew that and so that just made the brothers the older brothers even more angry and more irritable with um, Joseph and so um, and so yeah they basically the older brothers hated Joseph and um, and Joseph got everything he wanted from his dad because um, because his dad loved him more. Um, it, he was a favorite child. They he just he just got things uh, got more things than the older brothers. And so um, just to kind of add on to all of this, um, Joseph had a dream one night, and God talked to him and said, "Hey Joseph, one day your brothers and dad will bow down to you." And I don't know about you. But if my brothers are making me mad and, um, and I had this dream that said that they're going to bow to me one day, I'm telling them. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to say, hey, you know, you, quit, you, keep, you keep fighting me. You keep getting mad at me. But you just wait because God just told me that you're going to bow, bow down to me one day. And so um, obviously this made the brothers even more angry. And so what they did was they... Um, they took him and they threw him in a pit and they were gonna kill him. Um, but then they were like, ah, no, let's not kill him. Let's just sell him into slavery. Which in my mind, I feel like that is like way too drastic. Like, like I get it, like let's mess with them. This is, this is not cool, but selling him into slavery, that's crazy. And so um, throughout this time, Joseph was um, in Egypt um, in slavery. and But he had a great attitude about everything. He um, he, he was just doing everything with a great attitude and his owner Potiphar, Potiphar um, noticed that. And so basically um, Potiphar made him the head slave of the house. And so Joseph did everything for Potiphar, um, basically his right hand man and, um, and yeah, did everything that he was asked. And there was one rule um, that Potiphar gave Joseph and that was stay away from my wife. And so throughout the whole time, Joseph was like, yeah, that's easy. You know, I'm not going to do anything with your wife. That's your one rule. I'll stay away from you, wait, away from her and everything like that. But Potiphar's wife um, liked Joseph and she was, she kept trying to be intimate with Joseph several, several times. Um, but Joseph always stayed away. Joseph was always backing down and saying, no, 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 I'm not, not doing that. That's Potiphar's only rule. Um, but then one day, uh, Potiphar's wife um, wanted to be intimate with him, just kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, um, but Joseph kept saying no, kept um, kept staying away. And so Potiphar's wife um, started screaming and saying that, um, that Joseph inappropriately touched her and was onto her and, and all that stuff. So that's where we're going to pick up um, in Genesis 39, 19 um, through 23. And so it says, 
When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treat me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. And so, yeah, basically Potiphar was mad, as any husband would be if his wife, um, if his wife did if his wife said said things like this, or if his wife is treated like this. Um, and so so Potiphar threw him in prison um, and was like, you're gonna be here for the rest of your life because of what you did. Obviously Potiphar didn't know that his wife was making all this up, but that's a whole completely different story. Um, and we'll maybe get into that some other day. Um, but yeah, so Joseph was, was thrown in, in prison and he was stuck in prison. Um, but he, he still had a good attitude about it. And, um, and I think the most important part that comes from this, um, is in verse 21 and the end of 23. So I'll read that again. Um, it says, but while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And then the end, it says, the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. And I think that is the most important part of this whole story is that regardless of where, um, where Joseph was, regardless of what Joseph did to get where he was, the Lord loved him and cared for him and wanted to be with him and get him unstuck. And so there's so many different stories of of all this um, where where people are stuck, but the Lord is with them. And the Lord, um, you know, he cares for us so deeply. He knows that we're stuck sometimes. He knows that um, there's, there's decisions that have to be made. He knows that um, there are times where... Um, well, we're just stuck and we need help and God is with us. He wants to help us. He wants to love us. Um, and so, you know, we might be stuck in a physically, physic, physical way. We might be stuck, um, you know, stuck in our house, stuck in our room. Um, we can't go anywhere. We're, we're physically stuck or we might be stuck mentally or emotionally, or we might be stuck in sin. And, um, we might be in a place where, we're, we're stuck because, because we, we're afraid to turn back to God. We're afraid that our past sins are, are too big and God will never love us the same. Um, we might be stuck in a way that, um, that what we did, God will, God will not like it. And we're just scared to come back to God. But I want to, um, I want to bring up this, um, this other passage um, in Romans. Um, it's kind of on the complete opposite side of the Bible, um, but that's all right. So Romans 8, uh, 38, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so what that says, guys, is nothing can separate us from God. We might be stuck in these hard places. We might be stuck in a physical place, a mental, emotional, a sinful place. But God is always with us. God loves us so much that he doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what we've done, what we're going to do. Um, he's going to love us and he's going to forgive us for anything. And... And he will always, always, always be with us. And neither death nor life can separate us. Neither angels nor demons can separate us. Neither the past nor the future can separate us. Nor any powers, height nor depth, nor anything else on this creation can separate God's love from us. God is with us forever. God is with us in whatever we're doing. God wants to love us. He wants to be with us. He wants to help us 
get out of these situations we're stuck in. No matter where you are, guys, God is with you. No matter if you're stuck in your house and stuck in your room, stuck on your computer screen with these Zoom classes, God is with you and he will get you through this. Guys, we will get through this time of being stuck. God is with us. God loves us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you so much for uh, just being with us always. No matter where we are, no matter what we've done, you love us and you are with us. God, you are so great. You have showed us so many opportunities, so many ways of how you love us. And God, I just pray for everybody um, listening to this today, wherever they are, whatever, they, whatever they're doing, whatever they've done, God, I just pray that you are with them. And God, you just show them that uh, no matter what we've done, no matter where we are stuck, you are with us and you will help us get out. God, we love you so much. And I just pray that throughout this week, um, everybody is able to, um, to see where they might be stuck um, and to know that you love us regardless of anything, God. Thank you for everything you've done for us. We love you and we praise you. In your name I, in your name I pray. Amen. Guys, I hope you all have a great week. Um, remember, Lighthouse is uh, not tonight, but we'll be back next week. Happy Labor Day weekend. I hope you all have a great week. See you later.